You all asked for it and here it finally is, another episode of Grandmaster Chess Openings. In this video we'll have a look at the Accelerated Dragon, which is an opening against 1e4. Against e4 we're going to respond with the move c5 and why he continues with knight to f3. So let's have a very quick look at why this is called the Accelerated Dragon. So the normal dragon arises after the move d6, d4, captures, captures, knight f6, knight c3, and g6. All right, so this is a normal dragon. And against a normal dragon, white usually continues with bishop e3, bishop g7, f3, castles, queen d2, knight c6. And here white has two main options. One of them is to go along castles, and the other one is to go bishop c4. So we'll keep that in mind when, we'll, when we will start reviewing the lines of the accelerated dragon. Now, so once again, the accelerated dragon continues with the move knight c6, after which white continues d4, and here we're going to take and play the move g6. So it's called the accelerated dragon because we played the move g6 one move earlier, and know that we have not committed our d-pawn yet. It's not committed to d6, and they will play a role, they will play a role later on. All right, so white usually continues with the move knight c3, we go bishop g7, bishop e3, and we go knight f6, just developing our pieces. Um, white can go bishop c4. Another main move here is the move f3, just like in the normal dragon. And here we are going to castle. Now, let's imagine white tries to play against the accelerated dragon as if it was a normal dragon. So let's say white goes queen d2, right? To go queenside castling on the next move. Once again, note that we have not moved our d pawn yet. And here we can go d5 in one go. And actually, uh, against the line that we discussed earlier, if white already has castles on the board and our pawn is on d6, then the main move is d5. So here we gain a full tempo compared to the normal dragon. And black's already in pretty good shape. If white takes, we're going to capture. And uh, if white takes, we just recapture. And note that this bishop opens up. Let's say white takes, we go cd. And black is in very good shape here. We can use the open b and c files later on to attack. So this is what you should keep in mind if your opponent plays queen d2. We go d5 in one go. All right, so what happens if white goes bishop c4? Right, so here d5 is not an option. But the move we go for here is the move queen to b6. And things are not so easy for white. We're hitting the pawn on b2. And there's also some other problems in the white position. White cannot take this knight here on c6, for example, because we take taken e3 with a check. And after queen e2, we trade. And then we take here and we're up a piece in the end game. So black is completely winning. All right, so white cannot do that. Now let's have a look at what happens in case white plays bishop e3, blocking off the attack on the b2 pawn. Well, here black is a tactic. We have the move knight takes e4. All right, let's say white captures the knight. We take the knight on d4. All right, that was our idea of sacrificing the knight. We open up the attack of the bishop. It's very important to take with the bishop, not with the knight, because now this becomes a sort of a pin. Let's say white goes castles. White definitely still has compensation here. So we want to take with the bishop. Let's say white takes and we take with the queen. And the end game is going to be very, very good for us because we are simply up one pawn. All right. So um, there's this move knight takes c4. The main move for white here is knight d5. If white does not play this move, he's just going to be down a pawn. And black uh, is just much, much better. But after knight d5 is a very tricky move. Because the queen is under attack, it defends the bishop in some lines. So here the main move for black is queen a5 check. All right, white has to go c3 to block. And here we go, knight is c5. Okay, black stop a pawn, by the way. If white takes on c6, which is the only move to, to uh, keep an equal position, we're going to take with the d-pawn. And after knight e7, we move the king over. And after it takes rook a to c8, black has a pretty good uh, position. White has the two bishops, but we are fairly active, so black doesn't really have much to worry about. All right, so this is what happens in case white plays the move bishop to c4. Okay, we go queen b6, hit the pawn on b2, and we create all sorts of takes along this diagonal and towards the knight on d4. All right, instead of all that, what happens if white goes queen d2? After queen d2, we go short castles. And let's say white goes long castles, right? Because we know that after f3, we go d5, we transpose into that variation. If white goes queenside castle, if white goes queenside castles here, we play the move knight to g4. 
This move is very important to remember. You want to trade off this Dark Shard Bishop because without this Dark Shard Bishop, White basically doesn't have an attack. I mean, let's say White moves a knight and we take and White recaptures. White really needs this Bishop because he often wants to trade off the Bishop for our Bishop on G7 to try to weaken uh, the Dark Squares around our King. So here Black's doing very well. We just go D6 followed by Bishop E6, Rook C8 and Black has a great game. All right. So here we take advantage of the fact that the pawn is not on f3, we go knight g4 and trade off the bishop. All right. Uh, instead of all this, white can also take on c6. Here we're going to recapture with the b-pawn. And why does the move e5? This is the point of trading on c6. So here we cannot move forward. We have to make a slightly passive move at knight g8. But this is only temporary. Note that the pawn on e5 is on our attack. And if white plays a move like f4, we bring the knight back into the game by going knight to h6. And after queen d2, we go castles. And black's in pretty good shape. We can go d6 on the next move or knight f5. And black has plenty of counterplay here, so nothing to worry about. All right. So um, another move that white has is to move bishop c4 right away. This is the main line. And here we go castles. Now here, once again, if white goes f3, we go queen b6. We looked at this earlier. Um, and uh, so another move for white here is, is, is king side castles but here we have another tactic which is what makes the accelerated dragon so great it's full of traps here we have to move knight takes e4 which is a temporary sacrifice if white recaptures we have to move d5 hitting the bishop and the knight and things are not that easy for white I mean let's say white moves the bishop back to d3 here we take on d4 and we're up a solid pawn, right? Um, and so what happens if white takes on c6 first? To make sure that this knight is never have hanging, we're going to recapture with the pawn. We still have this uh, this fork. If white takes, we take with the pawn. And black's doing great here. We have the two bishops. We have a great center. We can take on b2 on the next move. Um, so once again, this really just illustrates how quickly things can go wrong for white and why the accelerated dragon is such a good opening at all levels. All right, so uh, white's best option is probably to go bishop to d3. And here we trade, and after the after the trade, black's doing pretty well. We can play a move like queen c7 to guard this, and uh, we can go rook b8 on the next move, move the other bishop over here. Note that this bishop is still very active on this long diagonal. So black's in pretty good shape here, so nothing to worry about. Now, another option that white has is to play the move bishop b3. And this is the only way white can get black into some sort of dragon, but not quite. Here we go d6, and after f3 we play the move bishop d7. And if white goes queen e2 here, ready to go uh, queen side castles, what we do here is we trade on d4, and after bishop takes d4 we go b5. All right, the idea is that after queen side castling, we go a5 with quite a lot of counterplay. We try to, we threaten to go a4 and trap this bishop. So black also doesn't really have much to worry about here. So this is the line you have to remember if white goes bishop c4 and bishop b3 very quickly. Now the one less line we have to look at is if white plays c4. And this is the main move at the grandmaster level. Here we play the move knight to f6. We hit the pawn on e4. And after knight c3 we play d6. Alright, and after white plays a move like bishop e2. Uh, for example, if white goes bishop e3, we go knight g4. Once again, we have this move hitting the bishop, which is often very annoying for white. So let's say white goes bishop e2. Here we trade on d4, lure the queen out of d4, and now we go bishop g7. And there's a lot of tactics in this line. For example, let's say white castles. We're going to castle. And then after bishop e3, we have a move like knight g4. Hitting the bishop and the queen, and we get the bishop pair. So black's already in pretty good shape. All right, so what white usually does is they go bishop e3, castles. We have to defend this bishop first, and now queen d2. And what you're going to do here is you're going to play the move a5, castles, a4. You create this nice little square for your queen, where it sits very nicely. This pawn on a4 clamps down on the queen side. You can go bishop e6, rook fc8 next, and black is in pretty good shape. So, yeah, uh, this is really all you have to know in the accelerated dragon. It is a really good opening for all levels. And uh, if there's any more questions you have, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.